Helping your visitors smoothly scroll to an element is an easy way to enhance the experience of your app. So we'll see how we can easily do this with browser APIs like scroll into view, scroll, and scroll by, all within a React app. In my app, I have a few different locations for where I want to set up jump points. Starting with jump to games, this technically already works, where if I click it, we can see that I jump right down to games. Now this worked because I use a fragment for the href, which is referencing this ID of games for the game section. But this interaction is a bit abrupt. When someone clicks this, I want them to smoothly scroll down to the game section. So an easy way in order to do this is to use the scroll into view method. So ultimately what we want to do is we want to fire the scroll into view method, but this method's only going to be available on element instances. Now we can certainly query for our element like we see in this example, but since we have pretty static access to the element that we want to reference, we can use the refs API from React. So I'm going to import use ref from React. And then inside of my app, I'm going to create a new ref called games ref and set that equal to use ref. Now down on my game section, I'm going to specify a new ref prop and I'm going to set it to games ref. Now, as we can see, TypeScript is yelling at us. So we want to make sure that we specify this is going to be an HTML div element, a div, not a dive. And we can also make sure that it's otherwise going to be null and set that default value. But now that we have this ref set on our jump to games link, I'm going to actually turn this into a proper button and I'm going to get rid of that href. And instead, I'm going to add an on click handler where inside I'm going to reference that games ref and I'm going to say dot current where the instance of that element is going to be stored on that current property. But then I'm going to add some optional chaining to make sure it ex exists before I fire my method. But then I'm going to specify scroll into view. So now back inside the app, once I click jump to games, we can see it does the same thing. But now I'm going to specify an options object where I'm going to say I want the behavior to be smooth. And this time when I click jump to games, we can see how smooth it was going down to that section. Now, if for whatever reason you don't have access to add a ref or maybe these elements are being dynamically created, you can also query for this element. Since my games section also has an ID of games, I can say constant element is equal to document get element by ID where I'll specify games. And alternatively, if you want, you can also use query selector where you just specify the hash along with it. But once I have that element, I can similarly just replace this ref and use that element instead, which will work just the same. But using refs is kind of the React way, so it's probably preferable to use that as an option. So that jump point is working perfectly. Let's try to replicate this elsewhere, where for each and every one of these posters, if you click one of these, it will similarly jump down to that particular game. Now for this one, similar to the situation we were talking about, it probably doesn't make sense to add a ref to every single one of these games, especially because likely in a real application, this would be probably getting dynamically added. So what we can actually do is we can add the click handler to our unordered list element, where we'll say on click and inside, we'll handle it kind of similarly to what we did before. But this time we do need to dynamically query for that element where we'll use document get element by ID. For inside each and every one of these list items, we do have that ID already available as the href. So while we could technically add our ID, which makes it a little bit easier to get, we can just make use of this href that we're going to hijack here. Now to get that element, we want to inspect the event of this on click handler, which we can type out as a react dot synthetic event, which is actually a capital S. But here we're going to set a constant of target, which is equal to event dot target. And we're going to specify it as an HTML anchor element. Now, one thing to quickly point out here is in this situation, if you have this anchor tag in this image and you click this image, this image would be the actual target. But I added this pointer events none class here so that it bubbles up to the anchor tag instead. Now, if I had some text in here instead of the image, it would by default bubble up and make the target this anchor tag. But because I want to have the images in there to make it look nicer, we got to make sure that we specify the pointer events none. But now that I have my target, I want to get the ID of that element. So I'm going to say constant ID is equal to target get attribute, which is going to be that href. And because I'm using get element by ID, I need to make sure I strip this hashtag from it. So I'm just going to simply add a replace with that hashtag to an empty string. Now we want to make sure TypeScript is happy. So just in case that doesn't exist, we'll add optional chaining. But now I can take my ID and I can pass it into get element by ID. And I'm going to make sure I'm also going to wrap this as a string just again to make TypeScript happy as I'm passing that through. But finally, I have my element and we can do the exact same thing we did before. So I'm going to just simply copy this scroll into view code and I'm going to replace that games ref dot current. And now when I want to look at dead space, uh oh, it just jumped down and it didn't scroll smoothly. Since we're using anchor tags instead of buttons, we have one thing we need to do, and that's run event prevent default. But now when I try that again, we can see how smooth that scrolls. 
Okay, so next up, once I get to the very bottom of the page, I wanna jump back up to the top of the page. Now again, looking at pure HTML ways to do this, we can technically do this by passing in an empty fragment. If I click jump to top, we can see that it does work. And this works according to spec, because if we look inside, we can see that if the fragment is an empty string, the return the special value top of the document. But similar to before, we wanna make sure that we provide a smooth scroll. For this, we can use the scroll or the scroll to method. But starting with scroll, the way that this works is we're gonna pass in some XY coordinates. So back to my code, I converted it to a button to start where I'm gonna add my on click event handler, where inside I'm gonna add window dot scroll. I'm gonna specify zero zero for X and Y zero. And when we click jump to top, we can see that it works, but it works just the same as that empty fragment. Where as you'd expect, the first thing we wanna do is add our options object, where we wanna specify a top value of zero, where we don't even need to specify that X value anymore. But then we can add that behavior prop and we can say we want it to be smooth. So now when we click jump to top, it works buttery smooth. Now, as I mentioned before, we can also instead use the scroll to method. Now, the funny thing is with scroll to is it works exactly the same as scroll. So without changing the code except the method name, it works just the same. And this is another interesting one to pull up from the spec where we can see when scroll to method is invoked, the user agent must act as if the scroll method was invoked with the same arguments. So for all intents and purposes, scroll to is just simply scroll. So we might as well use the authoritative one. But our jump to top is working really well now and we only have one thing left to do and that's add a next page jump. Now let me move myself out of the way for a second, but we can see that we have this next page button. And what do I mean necessarily by next page? Where if I hit the space bar, we can see that it goes down page by page. And maybe not a lot of people specifically use that space bar, but what if they have this option? So once you click it, it smoothly scrolls through the different pages of the site. Now, technically we can just use the scroll method again and do a little extra math, but what if instead we use the scroll by method? This is going to work somewhat similarly to scroll, but instead of the pixel values being the X, Y coordinates relative to the very top of the page, they're going to be relative to our viewport and it's gonna be the amount we want to scroll from that position. So if I can try to visualize this a little bit, if I have this poster art at a specific height and I want to scroll by that amount, it would only scroll that amount when I pass in that value. As opposed to if I pass that value into scroll, it would scroll from the top. So it would need to be the top value plus that in order to get to the bottom of Alan Wake. So on our next page button, I'm going to add my on click handler and inside I'm going to add window dot scroll by here. We can similarly use the coordinates if we want like before, but instead we're going to just go ahead and opt for our options object where I want to pass in a top value. And what this is going to be is the height of the viewport. Now, what I mean by the viewport is the height from the top of this Chrome here, or the bottom of the Chrome rather, down to the bottom of what I'm able to actually see or view. We can dynamically get this value by specifying window.inner height, where we can see that if I now shrink the browser and run that again, it's now 339. But we can simply dynamically pass that in to our top value of inner height. And we wanna make sure we add our behavior of smooth, but now back in the browser, we can hit this next page button. We can see that it was smoothly sailing through each and every page. While these were some simpler use cases, we could start to think about how these can get more advanced to provide more interactivity inside of our apps. Next up, let's see how we can easily build beautiful UIs with Tailwind using Daisy UI components.